Welcome to the Confessions of a Group X Instructor podcast. For group exercise junkies and enthusiastic classgoers, we'll explore and uncover authentic, thought-provoking, and heartwarming industry education and inspiration from entertaining, badass fitness pros. And now your host, creator of Warrior Rhythm, Warrior Strength, Warrior Combat, Warrior Revolution, and Warrior Kids Group Fitness Brands, Ellen DeWord. Here we grow. Welcome, everybody, to a rainy day edition of Confessions of Group X Instructor Podcast. Thank you so much for being here with me today, as I can just hear so much rain coming down on the little skylight above my head. Today, we're going to talk about why you should be weightlifting off the beat. Yes, I'm saying it. Yes, it's okay. I'll say it. It's controversial. It's okay. I know there's very popular programs out there where you lift weights to the beat of the music. And I love moving to the beat of the music. I love moving to the beat of the music. It lights my soul on fire. It's motivating. But I don't like to weight lift to the beat of the music and in the same order. And I'm going to talk about why we're going to kind of get into a little bit of the science and talk about why you should be doing your weightlifting off the beat. Okay. And not always in the same order, every single class, not if you want to have strength gains, break training plateaus and all that stuff. So if your doctor hasn't already told you, you should be lifting weights. If you're not lifting weights, You should be lifting weights. Lifting weights helps prevent injury. Just the act of uh, lifting can increase the toughness of the connective tissues, your ligaments, tendons, bones, muscles, and your joints. Your bone health. Weightlifting can improve bone density and lower your risk of osteoporosis by putting a healthy stress on your body. Mental strength. Weightlifting can have mental benefits, such as boosting your mood and helping you feel mentally stronger as you watch yourself get physically stronger. And also brain health, that's different than mental strength. Mental strength is more psychological, like you're proud of yourself. Brain health is something different. Weightlifting can improve your brain power, your cognitive function, which can be especially beneficial for older adults who are experiencing cognitive decline. There's so many other weightlifting benefits, improved heart health, improved control of blood sugar levels, enhanced mobility and flexibility. Remember, mobility is talking about how mobile a joint is. Flexibility is how flexible the muscle is. Those terms do not mean the same thing, though they can be somewhat related. Weightlifting can reduce blood pressure, lower stress, lower anxiety, and just promote an overall better well-being. I heard once on a podcast, it said like this. I wish I could remember who said this because I would quote them directly. If you lift weights, you are harder to kill. (laughs) That really just stuck out of me. I want to be hard to kill. We want to be hard to kill. Resistance training by way of improving strength and muscle mass can counter bone loss, help prevent injury, while strength-promoting exercise, SPE, I'm going to call that a few times today, has been linked to a reduction in all-cause cancer-related mortality research shows. The more muscle you have, the more calories you burn at rest During the overall course of your day, the more muscle that is on your body right now while you're listening to this episode, the more muscle that you carry with you, the more muscle mass you have, the more calories you burn. It's directly related to your metabolic engine. You burn more calories while you're sleeping at night if you have more muscle mass. 
I'm going to get sciency just for a second, and I'm going to read a little excerpt from the Oxford Academic Journal of Epidemiology. I can link this entire abstract into the show notes for all my nerds listening. <laughs> There is a well-established association between participation in regular physical activity and reductions in all-cause cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and cancer-related mortality. In the last decade, strength-promoting exercise, again, that's abbreviated SPE, has been integral, an integral component of physical activity guidelines around the world with the World Health Organization recommending at least two sessions per week. Current SPE, Strength Promoting Exercise, guidelines are primarily intended to increase strength and function. And there are a few data on associations with chronic disease and mortality. Participation in strengthening exercises has been associated with a reduced risk of type 2 diabetes in men ages 40 to 75 years, women ages 37 to 81 years, and working age populations ages 30 to 64. These associations were independent of aerobic exercise, conferred greater benefit when combined with aerobic exercise, and were more pronounced in older adults. Compared with aerobic forms of physical activity, SPE, strength promoting exercise, is unique in its ability to promote increase in muscle size and strength with higher muscle mass and strength being found to be associated with a lower mortality risk, aka harder to kill. Thus, SPE, strength promoting exercise, may be promising for reducing premature mortality and chronic disease risk. Are you convinced yet we need to be lifting weights? I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are lifting weights, but this is a message we need to say to our students and class goers. If you lift weights, you're going to be harder to kill. You're a better disease fighting machine. You're a better cancer fighting machine. You're a better diabetes fighting machine. Like in every single way, it enhances our quality of life. So let's talk about how we can train our muscles. There are two ways. Two. We can train our muscles for strength and we can train our muscles for endurance. That's it. Two ways. Both are necessary for life. We are genetically predisposed, I'll get into that with muscle fiber type here in a second, to be maybe one way more than the other. Let's talk about the difference between strength training and muscle endurance training. To train a muscle for strength, we have to lift very heavy and very few reps. You have your one repetition maximum. That is the most amount of weight you can do in one single solitary repetition. And if we are lifting in, let's say two to six reps, this is truly training muscle for strength. When we strength train, our muscle mass, the muscle size grows, hypertrophy. I like that word. It's literally the opposite of the word atrophy. You know, when our muscles atrophy, hypertrophy is the opposite. Atrophy, they shrink. Hypertrophy, they grow. If we want hypertrophic, big muscles, bigger shoulders, bigger butt, you know, bigger calves, whatever we're working on, then... We have to go slow and low repetition and heavy weight. This is very important and will help us function in life. It's functional. Picking up a child to carry them. That's a good example. Picking up a really, really, really heavy suitcase and pushing it up overhead in the bin of an aircraft. One rep, really heavy. Strength. Endurance, however, is the opposite of that. It's training a muscle for stamina, for staying power, 
for these muscles can keep going. These are higher repetition sets. Think 15 to 20. It's a little broader than that. Could be higher than 12, you know, less than 32. But generally in a group exercise class, this is going to be like 15 to 20 reps. This is endurance. It means you can keep going for a long time. This correlates the way we train for muscle strength or muscle endurance. It correlates with muscle fiber type, and there is a genetic predisposition here. So for our uh, strength uh, exercises, where we're explosive, powerful, lifting heavy, uh, think sprint, these are our bodies being powered by fast twitch muscle fiber types. Not a lot of oxidation going on. So these muscle fiber types are different, even in their color, less oxygen in. So we're not using oxygen in the same way when the, with this muscle fiber, with this muscle contraction, muscle fiber type. But then on the flip, on our endurance activities, running a marathon, doing 32 pulsing plie squats, doing 16 bent over rows quickly. <laughs> These are our endurance. And this is a slow twitch muscle fiber type. These muscle fiber types are um, really well equipped for oxygen delivery. So people that are genetically predisposed, predisposed I, I always thought in my mind when I was like studying this back a long time ago, taking my very first ACE exam, trying to learn this for the first time. I remember thinking like, okay, the fast twitch person is like a football lineman. And the endurance muscle fiber athlete is like this Olympic runner, like this Olympic marathon runner, you know, the Kenyan ones, they're always like winning all the, all these Olympic elite Kenyan athletes and their endurance marathon always impressed me so much at the time. Often those athletes are very vascular. The blood vessel walls are very dilated. They're tr they're conditioned. They've adapted to the oxygen delivery to the muscles continually for long periods of time. Pretty cool. So even though we have a genetic predisposition, like you might be more into short burst activities, uh, strength activities, or you might be uh, more adept naturally at longer endurance strength training stuff or aerobic capacity type work, the other muscle fiber type is trainable. Both are important. One isn't like better than the other. We need to have both. We want to train both for life. So why did I make this big, bold statement in the beginning of this episode about like, we should be weightlifting off the beat. The reason I like to weightlift off the beat and why our Warrior Strength program is programmed to be off the beat of the music for weightlifting is because I want people to be able to choose between the two. I want people to be able to choose to do strength training in their strength classes, in their weightlifting classes, whereas your typical mainstream weightlifting group exercise class, throw a dart, it is endurance training. It's high rep. And there's nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with that, but it is tied to the beat. And so if you take that out of it, the beat, and you can go at your own pace, you can pick up heavy dumbbells and do fewer reps and literally train for strength. And that might be what someone wants to do for different reasons. It, if they want to get stronger, not have more endurance, but get stronger, be harder to kill, harder to kill, then this gives them the space to do that. Literally, it literally allows them to train that way. So we just need to call it spade a spade. Muscle endurance training is what most group fitness strength training programs include. And so I'm really proud of ours that it has the flexibility and freedom for people to be able to choose to strength train. 
that way. Also, it might be more on their level for, like I mentioned, maybe they want a certain part of their body, shoulders, chest, glutes, calves, back. Like maybe they're looking for some more muscle mass for a certain aesthetic, for a certain look, and lifting high repetition is not going to get them there. But lifting low rep will. So that's a little bit about why we should weight lift off the beat and just why we should be strength training in general. But now I want to just touch on why you should change the order. I've already gone there. I already know there's popular programs out there that are all about the beat and always about lifting all in the same order. Always start with squats, then do chest. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's pro pro programs out there where it's always the same order and we should be we should be changing the sequencing it shouldn't always be the same it shouldn't be the same order it shouldn't always be agonist antagonist or push pull it should be different we should be mixing it up maybe start with chest maybe do chest and triceps together maybe start with back Maybe do back and chest together. Maybe start with legs. Like it should be mixed up. Another little like, I'm not on here to toot my own horn and to talk about warrior strength, but that's another why behind um, that program and its unique design. So the order and sequencing is always different. So I just want you to ask yourself, challenge yourself that way. As you think about weightlifting, are you getting in your two weightlifting sessions per week? And are your students, if you are, you probably are, are your students a minimum of two weightlifting sessions? And are they really geared for, for strength? Can your students lift heavy and go lower repetition? At least sometimes can they incorporate true strength training? We lose it as we age. We lose it 5% of your muscle mass post-menopause per year. What? Unless you do something about it. Unless you're doing something about it. So that's my challenge. Those are my thoughts. Think about the way you're training with your weightlifting. Think about why it matters. And like be inspired. This is making us harder to kill. I didn't plan a confession today. Um, let's see. I guess I'll confess that I don't love to lift weights. Um, I, I feel like that's fair. That's fair. That's honest. That's a good confession today. I don't I don't love it. Uh, I have don't ever remember not doing it, though, since I was old enough to be able to lift weights, I would say age 12. Um, so, yeah, that's my confession. It's not my favorite thing to do, but I do it. It's like, you know. It's, it's brushing my teeth. It's like, it's part of the routine. And um, I love feeling strong. And I've actually been caring more and more about it the older I get. Uh, and so I hope this episode is fun for you and inspires you to just lift a little heavier and get off the beat and change the order because our bodies are the most amazing amazing machines and they they adapt to the demands we place on them and if we always lift endurance we're gonna plateau if we're always lifting high rep if we're always lifting in the same order and i just named a lot of our pro popular programs out there do it exactly like i just said we they're fun they're great you'll be sore you'll improve for maybe two months maybe three months and then you will plateau because your body's incredible and your body will adapt to that and your body will adjust. Yep. So anywho, have a beautiful week and I can't wait to hear back from you. Hear back on, let us know when you see this episode and you comment on it or you see me post about it on social, what's your weightlifting plan? Do you like to lift heavy? Do you lift heavy? Are you lifting heavy enough? Are you like, no, I want to lift weights on the beat no matter what, because it's fun. Yeah, it is fun. It is fun like that. 
It is fun, but good luck getting stronger. <laughs> okay. I'm going to end on that note. Bye, you guys. Thanks for listening. Thank you for joining in on the Confessions of a Group X Instructor podcast. If you're interested in becoming a warrior instructor, go to warriorinstructors.com. But if you want more and found this episode amazing, please give us a rating. And with a simple click to subscribe, we'll invite you back to our next episode. So remember, be brave, be bold, be blessed. And above all, listen, learn, love.